and welcome back to those of you returning to New Egg TV. We appreciate that. But today we're going to do an overview on this AirStation AC 1750 gigabyte dual band wireless router from Buffalo, model number WZR 1750 DHPD. So before I go much further, I actually wanted to give you guys an example of what's the primary difference between the current model, which is the DHPD version versus the DHP version. And really the main difference is that they've installed DDWRT. So I, I will get into DBR, DDWRT in just a moment, but more importantly, I just want to mention that it's, it is an open source operating system or more or less a firmware for this system and it's Linux based. But aside from all that, uh, you're actually going to get a little bit more functionality out of it, but you could technically install it on this version. Difference being, you're going to avoid that three-year warranty. So you don't need to do that. You could just buy this version here and you don't have to worry about uh, avoiding any kind of warranty. So aside from that, I want to mention to you guys a little bit more about DDWRT if you're not already familiar with it. DD DDWRT is one of several options for open source firmware for wireless APs, routers, and embedded systems. And like a lot of firmware for routers, it's Linux based and replaces your router's current web GUI. The advantages of using an open source firmware is basically to get more reliable operation, better functionality, and in some cases a better GUI or graphical user interface. Also, due to the nature of open source architecture, some could argue that you're getting a more secure firmware as the community is basically helping to spot and fix potential flaws. Besides all that, it's free. So let's open up the box and take a closer look. And finally on to the router itself, give you guys a quick glance at it. It's sort of a rubberized black kind of faded matte color here. I shouldn't say faded, it's matte, it's nice. Uh, and then it kind of a gunmetal silver uh, paint over the plastic here. On the very front, I'll start at the very top. That is the AOSS button or Air, Air, Air Station One Touch Secure System. Could not get that out of my mouth. It's basically Buffalo's version of WPS. And then moving down the line here is three more uh, or three LEDs. Uh, first one here for wireless, obviously, then internet as well as LAN activity. And if I flip this around to the back, I can show you all the goodies on the back. Uh, starting at the very top here, we have access point over to wireless bridge mode. And essentially switching that switch over will change the two modes. If you are in AP mode and you tap this mode button, it's going to flip you between AP and router mode. And if you're set to uh, wireless bridge, you hit that mode button, literally nothing's going to happen. Uh, aside from that, we have the USB ports here, which you can use for storage or printers. We have a USB 3.0 port and a USB 2.0 port. Uh, above that is an eject button, allowing you to safely eject the storage from that device. If I move below both of those two USB devices, we have our five different uh, gigabit Ethernet ports. And of course, these four for LAN. This one in blue is for the WAN side. Uh, on off switch for the router in case you don't want to just unplug it. You hit the switch there for yourself and a little bit easier. And DC power in. Now, if I just look at the very, very bottom here, uh, all of Buffalo's products, or I should say a majority of them, have uh, added these nice little tags that basically allow you to check out uh, the default passwords for everything and have a really clean place to keep it, which is. Uh, that little tab here. Let's see if I flip that around properly. Uh, the configuration basics here, the IP address and the password and whatnot, and slides right in uh, down here. But I do want to show you at the very bottom of the router because there's a couple more things to show you other than the model number here. We also have the MAC address here as well as the serial number, uh, SSID information key and PIN. And then we also have right here uh, the nice little reset button in case you forget all these things uh, that you've currently set the password to and you need to reset it back to defaults. Okay, here we are logged in. Current firmware right now, we're looking at w DDRWRT version 24SP2. And that looks like 10, 22, 13, uh, I guess STD stands for standard. Aside from that, we are, you're now looking at the GUI that is DDRT or DDWRT. So uh, very clean. Nice GUI interface, a lot of help assistance here on the right. I'm going to go in a little bit more depth than I typically would with one of these because it's not just about looking at it, it's about getting, a, getting kind of your fill of what you're looking at here. So the, the main home screen is going to have your basic setup for everything uh, for the uh, wireless side it looks like, as well as some administration information. Uh, moving along we do have the WAN setup here as well as network setup uh, and time. So. All these things together on the very first screen on basic setup, very helpful because I don't have to go through a stupid wizard or anything else that I might have to do with other, other GUIs. Uh, I get all the information I need to get up and running right away. Time, you might, you might overlook thinking, oh, time's not that important. Some networks, if the time's not proper, uh, won't accurately download. You won't be able to download certain information from certain places, depending on the clients that are on there too, not getting their time properly. It might get it through the router and so forth. So let's just kind of go down the list here. 
Uh, it does have DDNS, uh, so dynamic domain name system set up if you wanted to set that up. Uh, several different options here, including uh, DYN, DNS, uh, no IP, and uh, DYN, SIP, to name just a few, as well as your own custom if you ended up setting up one that you wanted to do yourself. Uh, clone the MAC address. Uh, some advanced routing settings here because we can go into the gateway BGP RIP. That's great if you have uh, multiple routers in your household. Um, and so forth, uh, so forth. Also some static routing if you needed to set that up as well. Uh, virtual LANs, uh, nice option to have as well. And it looks like you can basically set up uh, different assigned names to different bridges, which is actually pretty, pretty healthy uh, and very helpful. So moving along, you can also tag the VLANs apparently, as well as setting up specific bridges here. Uh, wow, this stuff gets pretty, uh, pretty, pretty intense pretty quickly. So you're definitely going to have way more options than the standard uh, firmware is going to give you. I mean, that's that's just because everybody there at DDWRT are trying to just give you so many different options. One of one of the advantages of going with an open source firmware. I'm going to jump over to wireless here and just show you some of the basic things. Um, the physical interface for the SSID and all, all the different modes it can be put into as well as uh, the channel width if you end up messing with that. I wouldn't, I wouldn't, wouldn't mess with it with the 5 gigahertz uh, range or the 2.4 gigahertz because the standard should be okay. I know you do actually have slightly wider channel width in the 5 gigahertz range but uh, just making it so it has maximum connectivity I would just leave it the way it is unless you know exactly what you're doing. Uh, setting up a Mac Radius client. Uh, some more wireless security information here. Tons of different uh, ways to encrypt your connection, both with wireless security, I guess they're calling it zero and one for the two different uh, SSIDs that you'll be able to work with. Whoops, I jumped out of wireless way too early, guys. Mac filtering, uh, here's some advanced, so here's all the goodies that you can get into. Wow, there's tons of different options here, guys. Uh, moving right along, uh, WDS, so wireless distribution system. And setting this all up from point to point or LAN. And then we go right into the other wireless side. So WL0, so wireless LAN 0, and WL1, wireless LAN 1. And that's basically just dis distancing themselves or separating themselves, I believe, between the 5 gigahertz range and the 2.4 gigahertz range. And then WDS for that one. Uh, moving along to services. Let's see what else we have here. Wow. There's a lot in here, guys. I'm just going to kind of whip through a majority of this so you can get an idea of what you're looking at. Um, power of Ethernet up settings set for setting up a relay, wow. Specifically turning off the radio or using AOSS or unused if you end up not using it. So that basically what that means is, to give you an example of some customizability, I want a button that I can push and turn off my wireless radios. That I think is always helpful, especially if there's a time where you want your kids to go to sleep and you know they're on the wireless, just push, set this up so you can push that red AOSS button on the very front and shut off the wireless. That was not functionality that was built into this, radio, uh, built into this router initially, but thanks to DDWRT, you do have something like that. Um, free radius, PPOE server, PPPOE server, excuse me, uh, VPN, USB settings, uh, setting up a NAS via that USB, whether it's a hard drive or a flash drive and, and different file shares for here. You can also set it up to be a hotspot. That's very cool. Uh, using Sputnik agent or a uh, hotspot system, Wi-Fi dog or chill, chili spot. Uh, so many different options depending on what kind of software you're going to use for the clients to log into it. But that's very cool, adding much more functionality. Ad blocking too, look at that, using uh, Pri Privoxy. Very nice. Uh, jumping into the security, of course it has an SPI firewall. Thank you Linux for having that. Um, and then uh, several different ways of blocking requests here. Um, D DOS and brute force protection. Um, that's actually great if people are trying to just brute force the, the password and you can limit the number, of the, the access apparently here. So that's, that's very nice. Uh, VPN pass through. Um, access restrictions, so you can set up who and when people are allowed to get connected to the internet based on uh, different websites you might want to block to, as well as blocking words themselves, keywords. Uh, port forwarding, um, port range forwarding, which is great because then you can add an actual range of ports to port. Uh, so let's say you get an incoming port and you know you want to be able to accept multiple incoming uh, on a range of ports, that's going to be great. Port triggering, UPnP, uh, DMZ, and QoS. And then finally, we're going to move right along to administration. 
Uh, this is pretty standard for administration. You're going to be able to change your passwords here. Uh, remote access. So you can actually limit whether or not remote access will have access to the actual web GUI, uh, which is great. Or if you have it set up for SSH uh, management or telnetting in uh, or allowing any particular IP, you might be able to limit that to maybe a specific IP address if you set yourself up for um, if you know exactly who's going to be connecting in and when, you can set that up for that too. So, geez, there's actually a lot more than I anticipated I'd see here. Uh, keep alive settings, commands specifically, so you can actually uh, run command line, uh, you know, command line prompt, essentially allowing you to interface with it directly via the web GUI, which is very nice. CLI is always good. Uh, wake on LAN settings here. That's great. Reset everything back to factory defaults. Uh, you can check for an upgrade here. I actually don't have the WAN set up, but we could actually check for upgrades if I had. And then you can back up all your settings. And jumping right over to status, just so you guys can get a, a, a quick idea of everything else, they're actually going to give you the ARM processor model um, because DDWRT is just trying to, to recognize every single aspect of this router and make it available to you. That's, that's phenomenal. So thanks to the guys at DDWRT and Buffalo for making such a solid router. And before I cut this too short, I realize we do have WAN to show you guys. So there's a little bit of traffic that you can monitor, uh, as well as the LAN side. We have wireless statuses, as well as bandwidth. Well, that's nice. It's going gonna, it's gonna to use every single wireless, as well as WAN, and each one of the LAN ports. Looks like each one of them, at least. And then system information. Okay, everybody, that's going to wrap up this overview of Buffalo's 3x3 wireless router featuring open source firmware from DDWRT. And if you like what you saw today, don't forget to click the like button. And if you haven't already done so, click subscribe to any of our various YouTube channels. And we'll see you guys very soon.